What's going on? It's Suk and I'm back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. Now in today's video, I'll be showing you what it's like to play games on the 2020 i5 MacBook Air. As always, the specs for the model that I'm using in this video can be found down below in the description and I have already uploaded a video in which I've shown what it was like to play games on the entry i3 model, which I will have linked down below in the description. Or of course, you can click the card in the top right to go and check that out. I will also have the maximum spec model on the channel very soon. Also stay tuned to the very end of this video to see if there are any differences between playing on Windows 10 via bootcamp or straight through macOS. Finally, we are on the road to 5,000 subscribers and if you are new around here, then I must ask of you to hit the subscribe button, clicking the bell to be notified of when I upload any new videos. But without any further ado, let's hit the titles. So first up, let's talk about what games I played on this machine with Windows 10. Now the games I played here were GTA 5, Call of Duty Black Ops 4, Fortnite, Battlefield 5, Apex Legends, Minecraft, CSGO, and finally League of Legends. So I tested all of these games at high graphical settings and starting off with this MacBook Pro's native resolution of 2560 by 1600, you can see that as you'd expect for a machine without a GPU, that the frame rates were quite poor. Even with the power of the temp generation's Iris Plus graphics, it still struggled somewhat even at this resolution with these graphical settings. And in fact, I couldn't get Battlefield 5 to even run at these settings with the game closing every time I increased to that resolution. Minecraft by far performed the best here averaging over 50 frames per second while League of Legends came in second with around 41 frames on average while games like Apex Legends, GTA 5, CSGO and Fortnite performed similarly poor barely being able to reach an average frame rate of around 10 frames per second. But surprisingly, this is still a massive upgrade in performance over last year's model, which struggled to even average around 4 frames per second while playing Apex Legends, whereas now we're seeing an average of around 8 frames per second. Call of Duty Black Ops 4 came in third place, which wasn't too bad all things considered, with an average of around 26 frames per second. Now especially when you factor in that when playing the exact same game at the exact same resolution and graphical settings on the entry 2020 MacBook Pro, I got an average of around 25 frames per second so all things considered in terms of that comparison it did actually perform very well but nevertheless with such low frame rates most of which were barely playable i chose to lower the resolution to full hd at this 16 by 10 aspect ratio of 1920 by 1200 at this resolution minecraft had an average frame rate of around 71 frames per second while league of legends had an average increase of 15 additional frames increasing from 41 to 56 frames per second now even with this increase in performance, you've got to remember that the display on this MacBook Air is capped at around 60Hz. That means that you won't actually see any additional performance after 60 frames per second. Which is why I often get asked about lowering the graphical settings down to low or medium to see higher frame rates. But in actual fact, 9 times out of 10, you're not going to see it. The only time you will actually see that difference is if you were to connect an external display which had a higher refresh rate. Also, at this resolution, there was pretty much no change in the frame rates that we saw when playing Fortnite, with this game increasing its average by only one frame per second, now averaging around 11 frames. Now, Battlefield finally ran at this resolution, giving us an average of 8 frames per second, which was quite bad, all things considered. But yes, you could get better frame rates on a gaming laptop, which would be around half the price of this machine, but you've still got to remember that this machine isn't designed to play these titles. Heck, it's not even got a dedicated GPU so this is the kind of performance that you can thus expect. Black Ops 4 now averaged over 30 frames per second and CSGO still averaged under 20 frames per second which was quite interesting as normally these two games perform very similarly. LOL and Minecraft are still the top two best performing games averaging 56 and 71 frames respectively. Finally, I lowered the resolution down to standard HD at this 16 by 10 aspect ratio to a resolution of 1280 by 800. Now things here were very interesting. Firstly, Battlefield 5. Wow, this game now stunned us with an amazing frame rate of 11. Yes, 11 frames per second. 
which is bad but once again you've got to be insane to want to do this clearly playing a game of this nature on this hardware is going to be a bloodbath though playing this game at these exact same settings on the entry 2020 macbook pro we did see frame rates slightly higher at around 18 frames per second on average Minecraft averaged over 90 frames per second with peaks hitting over 110. LOL also averaged over 60 frames too so yes if you are looking to play Minecraft or League of Legends then you could do so on this machine though you would have to boot camp the machine to run Windows 10 and lower the resolution so yeah there are a few compromises here. Once again Black Ops 4 and CSGO performed almost identical with a mere 4 frames separating them on average though CSGO had the maximum peaks hitting that 60 frames per second threshold. Games like GTA 5, Apex Legends and Fortnite performed equally, equally as poor with neither of these games eclipsing an average of 20 frames per second. Now the majority of these heavier graphically intense games are only available on Windows as they utilize the DirectX graphics capabilities whereas macOS uses Metal. Now with that being said the selection of games are now going to change. Now on macOS we will play with Fortnite, CSGO, League of Legends and Minecraft. The same again here starting off with the native resolution and high settings sees Minecraft once again with the highest frame rate on average with 62 frames per second. At this resolution it was surprisingly very playable and somewhat enjoyable which is something you don't normally hear me saying. Also at this resolution LOL came into a close average of almost 50 frames per second which is great to see. Now lowering the resolution as we did before sees Minecraft now average over 75 frames per second. LOL once again at this resolution was quite enjoyable with its average of above 55 frames per second. CSGO was improving throughout coming in with 40 frames per second on average when playing at 1280 by 800 which it pretty much doubled its performance when compared to how it performed at native resolution but perhaps the biggest shock throughout this was Fortnite which on this hardware regardless of if it was played on macOS or Windows 10 was the worst performing game. It did not matter whether it was performed on Windows 10 or macOS I couldn't get a frame rate better than 20 frames per second. Perhaps one of the more interesting takeaways from this video is the performance of the 10th generation i5 with its Iris Plus graphics versus the 8th generation i5 which we've still got in the 2020 MacBook Pro. If there's one thing that I do know is that with the 2020 MacBook Pro there is a heat pipe that directly connects the CPU and the fan whereas on the MacBook Air models even going back to 2018 there was no heat pipe connecting the CPU and the fan. Which does get me thinking about how this machine would have performed had it had a better cooling system. When taking a look at the results of the benchmarking test that I performed and then comparing the results you'll find that the 8th generation processor performs better in the 2020 MacBook Pro when performing OpenGL tasks. Whereas the 10th generation processor found in this i5 MacBook Air is much better when performing tasks that require the Metal API. Along with this comparing the performance of games played on macOS and Windows 10 it's clear that games that were played on Windows 10 were slightly slower when compared to the same games played on the same hardware running macOS. Which is once again showing its power and performance over OpenGL. So it's quite interesting to see that you could actually play games on macOS and get frame rates similar to and in most cases exceed what you would expect on Windows but the sheer amount of different games that you have access to and the variety of them on Windows 10 is vastly superior. Now still stand by it that if you are looking to play games that Windows is going to be the better platform that you want. That is unless Apple were to ever support Nvidia's graphics cards and or bring over high refresh rate displays to the Mac. They've done it with the iPad Pro with ProMotion and there are rumours that it will soon be coming to the iPhone. I'm just wondering and waiting for the day that it makes its arrival on macOS. If it's purely for gaming then as most of you already know do not buy a MacBook unless it's the 16 inch model but even then you could get so much more for your money with a dedicated gaming laptop for over £2000. So there you have it, that's what it was like to play games on the i5 MacBook Air. Of course I am still expecting the i7 with its maximum spec configuration with the most storage, RAM and everything to be coming into the studio very soon. So if you are yet to do so then go ahead and subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified of when that video comes out. 
If you've got any questions with anything you've seen in this video, then be sure to leave them down below. Or alternatively, and probably the best thing to do is to hit me up on my social media, links to which can be found down below in the description. Once again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.